During 2008, in the United States, more than 37,000 people lost their life in automobile accidents. About a third of these died in crashes involving drivers who had been drinking. We have to check out everything before you go out. Mm -hmm. And do I do that? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no auto operate a car, mm -hmm. and you get and you and you gonna pass a test. After them, if you, if I can say, if you, if you succeed, they might, they might give you the driver license. That's the formal way. Yeah. You are now listening to Raoul the Teacher's Class, a podcast made for the EFL learners and with the EFL learners. Hi there, and welcome to another episode of Raoul the Teacher's Class. This is the episode seven. If you are EFL learners, um, Raoul the Teacher's Class is definitely the podcast you have to listen to. Today in the studio with me, two English learners as usual, and today we're going to talk about traffic. I'm going to let them introduce themselves. Let me start with you. Sir, how are you? Uh, I'm good, and I'm so euphoric to be here, and it's a great pleasure. Okay, so can you introduce yourself a little bit to the listeners, your name, where you from and everything. My name is Morasi John Wicklef. I'm from Guadeloupe and I'm 19. Oh, that's great. And what about you, sir? Hello, everyone. My name is Andreal Eliloa and I'm 21 and I live in Guadeloupe. Awesome. Awesome. So you, you are both English learners? Yeah, yes. Yeah. Okay. So how long have you been learning English though, guys? Uh, I've been learning English for four years. Okay, oh, for you, and it's been such a good experience for me because I always love English. English is in my blood because English was so easy for me when I started first started learning English. It was it was quite easy. I had no problem with pronunciation, listening, and grammar, all the stuff because mm -hmm. I, I always was the first of the class right. and I always was the I can say the person who worked the most. Okay, yeah, awesome. Um, what about you, sir? How long have you been learning English? I've been learning English since, I mean, I mean, for about two years, I can say so. And you're still learning? And I'm still learning English. Of course, because, you know, the language is huge, you yeah. know. I have another question for you guys. Um, what was the motive behind your learning of English? What was the motive? Uh, I can say that my purpose for learning English was, uh, it was like my love for English okay. because while I was listening to a music and I said, oh, man, why can't I understand what they are saying by watching a movie and while being on the internet because English is the the language of the internet. Most of the thing on the internet is in English. And I said, oh, why can't I understand them? And I decided, I said, I am going to learn English because I am a uh, I love languages. I love languages, and I like when when, when I arrive somewhere and meet uh, every people are speaking English. I can speak it too. So that is the reason why I decided to learn English. It's not because of anything else. I just wanted to learn English because it seems like I have. It is like a power. If I arrive somewhere and many people are speaking English, I can speak it too. While there are other people that that still be needed a translator though. Okay. But me, I can speak and I can be at his and do it all the time. So you say you love languages. So do yeah. you do you do you speak or are you learning another language besides English? Uh, besides English, I'm currently learning Spanish. Okay, great. Yeah. And is it is it as easy as English? Yes. Because you, you said oh um, anyway. So yeah. you just yes, it is. But Spanish get more words, but it's so it's way it's, it's yeah. way okay. Yeah. So um, what about you? So what is the motive? So why why you are learning English? So basically, English is my favorite language. So. I feel that I have to learn English and I just do it. Okay, great. The next question I'm gonna ask you guys is this. I received like 12 to 14 students and most of them share the same view. Like, you know, I'm learning English because I wanna earn money. And your answer is a little bit different because none of you <laughs> mentioned that. No. So do you do you share the view, guys? Do you think that um, here in Haiti, English is a way it's just it's a way to earn money i think it is um, i think it is for some people because there are some so some some english learners though the, their purpose is to be a translator or a teacher maybe they are they are they are they are trained for that but we can still make money but me i'm not making any money with english though and why not because um this wasn't part of your plan this right? 
was a part of my plan, but if the opportunity just pop up, I can still size it. But it was not in my plan that I'm going to 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 like earn money with English because I I always say that I can say if, if it's a lack of self confidence because I always say that to translate I have to get I have to acquire more knowledge so that I can sure. translate because I I noticed that there are some some English learners I can say they didn't even have the skills to translate and they try to do it because mm-hmm. that they find the opportunity to do but me I think I have to be I have to be on the top to do it yeah that you need you, of course you need um exper- you need experience and qualifications yes. to to be a trans I said experience first because here in Haiti it's easy for someone to you know get to be I mean to work as a translator once someone once someone um knows that you um get the knowledge of the language okay. They can still choose you to work as um, translator because there is a need uh, of translators here in Haiti. As you know, different strangers, I mean, a lot of strangers are coming to help. Yeah. Even though the, the situation of the country doesn't, you know, allow that these days, but and uh, you can still have the experience. But again, make sure I mean, make sure you get the qualifications as well. Yes. You know? Yeah. So, do you share that view that people can earn money with English, or all you're not, or all you're learning English? In, in, uh, in the purpose of making money with it yeah I think it is possible as 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 you can see nowadays if you get English as a second language you can have a lot of opportunity like jobs and even make money as a traductor or whatever so mm-hmm. in Haiti I think it is possible okay great so dear listeners you are listening to white to week left and I don't want you to you know Uh, th- this would be for me a, 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 a big deal to have a superstar in my show, but this is week left <laughs> yeah, in English yeah. Learner, and uh, the, um, we were talking a bit about themselves, their experience as English learners, and and everything. After the break, we're gonna have still have a conversation with them, but this is the conversation will be oriented towards traffics um, and car accidents and transportation because this is the topic that we are covering today. Hello, moi c'est Jael, étudiant à niveau 1 HPP. Moi vinn informé que HPP Training Center a offert opportunité à 30 jeunes pour apprendre anglais pendant 6 mois sans ou pas payer en goutte pour session. Ou à payer seulement 50 dollars inscription à 300 dollars frais d'entrée. La donne, ou à payer jouer une green card de PPA à livre anglais pour travailler. Programme ça a commencé 19 novembre 2019 pour finir 29 mai 2020. Pas oublier, c'est celle 30 jeunes à prendre. Qui donc, pied écoute, prend des vents. Pour plus d'informations, contactez HPP dans 43 11 28 30. Okay, guys. So, are you ready for the? Have you? Have you? Okay, you 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 have been learning English for the, for four years, four years, three years. Are you familiar with you know terms, uh, or are you used to having conversation related to traffic? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm, of course. Do you complain a lot about you know traffic, or transportation in your oh country? Oh my God! Yes, definitely. Yes, Is definitely. it tough? Oh, it's yeah. so tough. Like so. <laughs> I always refer to that. Americans say, American people say that time is money, but in Haiti it's not like this because yeah. <laughs> if you wanna go somewhere, yeah. if you wanna go somewhere maybe at at one, you might leave your house even at ten. That's so the way that you, you manage, have, definitely. Yes. Yeah, like because the gap, you have to have a gap time to to like to, to reach your destination because mm-hmm. Haiti is like this. Like, time yeah. is not money in Haiti. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, guys, the first question that I'm gonna ask you, this is basically information that you're gonna share with the learners okay. and also to anyone who is listening to you. Um, at what age does the average person obtain a driver license here in Haiti? What age should you have to get a driver license? 18. 18. It should be 18? 18. Okay. So um do you do you do you have one? Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. Not so not you're 19. You're 21. Yeah, 21. So you should yes. have a driver license. <laughs> okay, so what do you have to do to get a driver license? Do you know? I think to get a driver license you better you better pass a test and mm-hmm. be trained for that. You better go to a school. Get like driver li- that, lessons. Yeah, yeah. You go to a school that you train to know how to operate a car mm-hmm. and you get and you and you gonna pass a test after them if you if I can say if you if you succeed they might they might give you the driver license. That's the formal way. Yeah. Uh, is there an informal way? <laughs> I don't know. I'm saying <laughs> that, that, that you say yeah, that you say that's the formal way. Yeah, so is there is there another way to get the driver license though? <laughs> 
Um, yeah, you tell me. If you do so, you tell me. Yeah, there is other. What is like, what is the other way to get like, the driver license? If I have, if if you have a friend of you who's working, I can say at the at the district of giving driver license, you can just pay this person and they just I can it's illegal, but they're gonna give you the driver license yeah. without knowing even how to operate a car. So you don't even have to, you know, take driver, li- driver lessons, license, take the test and everything. Yeah. You just get. Your driver license yeah, as yeah, man, yeah. easy as one, two, three. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah if you got money. And, and, and relation. Okay. Yeah. Are there speed limits in your country? Do I know? You don't know. I don't know. I think I think we do have, but people don't respect. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Every country for sure has speed limits, but um, we don't respect. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So do you do you do you often ride public transportation during rush hour? Rush hour is like when everybody is going to work or everyone is out, get back to their house. Like rush hour would be like six thirty seven yeah. in the morning, a uh, four or five in the afternoon. In the afternoon. Yeah. Okay. So do you do you do you often ride public transportation mm-hmm. during rush hour? Yeah, yeah. We're all going to school or going to do somewhere. It's so it's so hard to get. A that would be my question. Um. How is it? Is it frustrating? Oh it is, my God. Uh, it's so hard because sometimes there is a, 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 a lack of tap tap for mm-hmm. the amount of people that is standing at the, at the maybe at the tap tap station, station, at the bus station. At the tap tap station <laughs> and people, and when, when the tap tap say that, and when the tap tap stop, and that's you, all the people are washing. To mm-hmm. get into it, mm-hmm. and you maybe they are fighting, and people are stepping, are stepping on you, and yeah, sure. oh my god! Yeah, Even the, like, imagine like that you are so dressed up. Yeah, yeah, like and like like Andrew, I mentioned, it's like you were in a competition. competition. The, yeah. the, the, imagine the, that you are so dressed up. You know, you got your white shirt and all this stuff to get in your going to yeah. like come on to transportation. Somebody just touch you and oh yeah. my god! Yeah, that's that's definitely crazy. Yeah, that's you frustrating. Know? Um, the next question I'm gonna ask you guys is, um, what is the most I mean, from your point of view, from your point of view, what is the most dangerous form of transportation? Yeah, people can motorcycle. Try. <laughs> <laughs> motorcycle. What about you? Yeah, motorcycle. I think it is, but tight, tap tap also. as well. Yeah, as, as yeah. Well. But you mentioned why you mentioned motorcycle, guys. Should the the, the motorcycle driver wear the helmet when when they are, you know? Yes, they have to. They have to, but do they actually do that? Oh, they do. They do. <laughs> no. they do. Should they, like, you know, we have a lot of motorcycle drivers, and this is a way of life here in Haiti, you know. Um, this is the way that young, a lot of young people are driving motorcycle right now to, you know, earn money, maybe yeah. bring food to the table at okay. home and everything. Um, normally, should the driver and the passenger wear the helmet should be only the, the, the driver. They should. They should. They should to protect themselves. <clears throat> they should. But what actually happened is <laughs> none of them. <laughs> Worry. Yeah, them yeah. That's and this dangerous. is and this is pretty dangerous. Yeah. And yes, we, it is. We, 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 we know that um if you are listening to the show and I, we all also adv- of course you are learning we're just having conversation, you know, with, um, um, related to, you know, traffic and everything. And you can also learn from that. So it would be way better for you guys if you're going to school or anywhere else. So, you know, make sure that you get an helmet from the motor driver. So what are we talking about that? So have you ever seen a traffic accident? You have never seen Not really in person, but now we Videotape, but... Yeah, yeah, not, yeah, like living that. Yeah, you, yeah, yes. Okay. So, um, so, so for sure, you have never been involved in one. Yeah, huh? I've never been. Okay. So, do you do you guys wear seat belt when you when you are not when you were driving, but when you oh. were on the passenger seat? They, or do or, or does the driver himself wear the wear seat belt? Sometimes the driver. Like where's the seatbelt? Mm-hmm. But for the other passengers, maybe the if 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 I can say the car can take five people, mm-hmm. and in this car <laughs> the car is too quad. And they force the yeah, car to take like to take more. Yeah. And how come that we're going to to pass the seatbelt? Exactly. Should, yeah. You don't worry. Do you do which, you do which you do that? Whoop though. And this <laughs> and side side us. <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah. yeah. So do you do you do you wear um, the seatbelt or do you? Always advise, you know, someone who is driving to wear the seatbelt. To yeah. be honest, 
I, I won't say I, I always wear a seatbelt, but I used to do that. So what would be your advice to anyone who is driving? I'll say that when you're driving, mm-hmm. like when you're driving of course, uh, any vehicle, don't, don't, don't drink. Mm-hmm. Don't drink and don't stay, stay focused on the world. Mm-hmm. Don't be distracted by anything. There are, there are some drivers while they are driving, they are on their cell phones, they are drinking. Or yeah, sure, are eating, sure, yeah. sure. Behind sure. the wheel, so... Yeah, I eat while driving. <laughs> Sorry, but I don't know. I don't know. Sincerely, I don't know how I'll be able to, you know, in the good to know segment, give tips to people about the behavior, the, the, the attitude that they have to to have behind the steering wheel. But sometimes I do that. You know, if I'm starving, you know, I may, you know, grab a little thing while driving. That's whiskey. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah, what would be your advice for, for the drivers? Yeah, first of all, I think... We have to check out everything before you go out. Mm-hmm. And do I do that? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um. and don't no, never speed. I mean, drive over, drive the, spe- over, the, over speed the speed limit, limit uh-huh. and don't drunk driving. Always, I mean, care about the traffic light, the signs on the road, and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's, that's good. Do you speak like drivers, guys? None of you has driver license, and you just give um, those type of advice. It's I crazy. don't know. We we are learners. <laughs> uh, all right, so you're learning. Yeah. Okay, learning. great. So, <clears throat> dear listeners, you were listening to our guest talking a little bit about the topic. This is a way to tackle the subject first, but also give them a space where they can, you know, share with you guys what they know, and this is an opportunity for them to, you know, practice the um around the topic and if you are at home you can still you know jot down those questions and practice them with your friends so now let's go guys with some words okay. related to transportation car and everything the first word that i have is breathalyzer you mentioned a lot you know not drinking uh, while drinking driving, while driving while. you know so normally if you were stopped by a police officer yeah. and you were su- suspected of consuming alcohol yeah. the the police can ask you to breath into a breathalyzer so a breathalyzer is a device okay that measure you know the rate of alcohol you know from a person expired breath okay, okay? so uh, one more time the breathalyzer i'm going to spell it Breathalyzer is B R E A T H A L Y Z E R. The breathalyzer, it's a noun, of course. It's a device that measures chemicals in a person's expired breath just to know know, the the, the rate of alcohol or if you have been drinking, you know? Uh, Sure. So, a rental car. So, you know what a rental car is? Yeah, we know. If you, what is it? Like if you maybe if I'm going to Capetian and mm-hmm. I and I I didn't go with my car, I just go to an agency and ask for a rental car or pay for a rental car. Exactly, like you can have it it's for a like period that. of time, right? Yeah, yeah. So this is not your car. Yeah, of course. Yeah, and we have to talk. So normally, if you have an accident or if you get a ticket. So you cannot operate the ve- you cannot operate the vehicle anymore. So you can you, or if again having an accident, you can still call. You can still you can still call an agency. So they're gonna set a tow truck. The truck that tow the car is a tow truck. You can call a tow truck and they're gonna tow the car. T O W, right? Okay. Yep. And after we have hitchhiker, you know what is it? <laughs> the verb is to hitchhike. The most common common term is to get a, a ride, yeah, right? Okay. But to hitchhike is, you know, ask for a ride. So hitchhiker is a person who travel by getting free ride from <laughs> passing vehicles, right? <laughs> <laughs> so if you are going somewhere and you maybe don't have the transportation fee, you can just... Do you do that, guys? Do you hitchhike? No. It's dangerous. <laughs> it's dangerous? Yeah, you can be kidnapped. Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. But if you know the person, yeah, if yeah, it's it's something else, all right. <laughs> yes, and and uh, at the beginning of the show, you mentioned that this is tough for people to you know use common transportation here in Haiti because yeah. this is a waste of time. And I think one of the reasons you mentioned that is traffic jam, right? Yeah. Oh yes. Yeah. <clears throat> and we have the word um, snarl up. It's S S N A R L. 
hyphen U F U P. Sorry, snarl up is a number of vehicle blocking one after another until they can scarcely move. All right. So traffic jam. Okay, you can be in a traffic jam for like you know a few minutes, but if the car are pretty close and they can barely move, so you can say um, snarl up. Okay, I'm in a snarl up. All right. So traffic jam is the most common term, but okay. you can use that too. And we also have gridlock. Gridlock is G R I D L O C K. So gridlock is it's a it's a grid a gridlock is a very tough, you know, a very tight traffic jam. All right, uh, where you can barely move. <laughs> yeah, you cannot even move. All right. Start. Exactly. And we also have pedestrian crossing. Pedestrian crossing. You know what pedestrian is? Yes. Do you walk a lot, guys? Sometimes no. I I like I like to walk because mm -hmm. it's it's good for my health and sometimes sometimes I can say that I'm a yeah pedestrian. yeah sometimes when you're working with a lady too so you can yeah. <laughs> you can walk kilometers without you know even without notice even notice yeah <laughs> yeah so pedestrian crossing is what this is a street crossing where pedestrians have right of way. Okay, so we also call it zebra crossing. I don't know why this is for people, but it has the name of a, an animal. Yeah, we say zebra crossing. This is where people can, you know, cross or have way. And we have speed limit. You mentioned that you don't drive over the yeah, speed, speed limit. limit. Okay, speed limit. Your speed S P E E D limit L I M I T. So the speed limit is the regulation establishes the top speed permitted on a given road. Okay, so if you go over the speed limit, you can get a ticket. And after we have um, crash, we can say car accident or we can say car, car crash. crash. Okay. But when we when we use crash, this is a very serious accident. accident. Okay, yeah. so exactly um, fender bender that I mentioned. This is the last word that I'm going to share with you guys. Fender bender, F E N D E R and B E N D E R. It's a collision between motor vehicles that produces minor damage it's okay. not something big and no way to call policemen and everything you can just manage that for yourself okay, yeah. right good so let's go for the phrasal verbs guys you like that <laughs> i know english learners here in haiti i don't know this is my my observation you do love um expressions yeah. <laughs> if idioms yeah. phrasal verbs and everything <laughs> yeah so let's go with the uh, um, phrasal verb buckle up but to buckle up B U C K L E, buckle up, U P, means to put one's seatbelt. Yes. Okay. So you can say, put your seatbelt, you can say, buckle up. Buckle up. So if I say buckle up, means, you know, okay. tie yourself. <laughs> <laughs> and okay, we have to cut off another car. To cut off another car. So if you cut off another car, you, it means that you suddenly drive in front of another car. Okay, so if you were driving and you don't, you didn't expect the person to, you know, drive in front of you. Okay. And the person driving in front of you suddenly, so the person, the car just cut you off. And we have to drive up, okay? So if you are invited to a party and maybe there, there, is, there is a young lady in a party that you want to impress, <laughs> you just drive up, okay? So to drive up means you arrive in a vehicle. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm gonna drive up to yeah. the forties just to show her that I can drive and everything. <laughs> oh, yes, and we have to pull over. Okay, so to pull over, like if you are driving over the speed limit, yeah. maybe a policeman can pull you over. So when they pull you over, it means you steer the vehicle to the side of the road. Yeah. All right. Maybe if you have a flat tire, you can do that. And so the last, the last, the last phrase of it I'm sharing with you guys is to veer off. To veer, V E E R of O F F, means to turn aside suddenly and leave some direction. Let's say that we are going to Kwade Bouquet, for those who know that direction, and while getting to Kafu Maasa, Maasa Crossroad, you know that I intended to go to Kwade Bouquet and I receive a call saying that let's go to Fluyu. So I just veer off, you know? Do you understand that? Yeah. Yeah, it's just okay. off, exactly. So you just turn aside suddenly and you just leave the direction you take another one, okay? And again, if you veer off someone or something, you just turn or steer sharply from that yeah. person or that You can pain. do that if you're following too. Exactly. Like it's dangerous yeah, and yeah, you notice exactly. that somebody's you know, following somebody, you. Yeah, exactly. You yeah. just veer off. Yeah. Exactly. Good. 
So let's go with the idioms to finish, guys. Are you ready? Yes, we are. Okay. Do you know what a bumper to bumper traffic is? I don't know. No. So have you ever been to Corfu? Yeah. Yes. So we, we know you know Corfu has this reputation. <laughs> Always have traffic. Yeah. All right. So a bumper to bumper traffic is when vehicles are in line after another and are moving very slowly or just stop completely. If you have a line of vehicles, one after another, then they don't move for like 5, 10, 20 minutes. So that's a bumper to bumper traffic because you know what protects your car from not hitting or protects you if you have a car crash. That's what we call the bumper. This is the front part of the yeah, car. Okay, yeah, so okay. if it is, you know, really close to the other one or to the car in front of you, we call it bumper to bumper traffic. Okay. Yep. Yeah. And do you know to gun the engine? You don't shoot in the engine. <laughs> to gun the engine means to drive speedly or to drive over the speed limit that's an engine. So you can say, I never drive very fast. I never drive over the speed limit. Or you can simply say, I never, I never gun the yeah. engine. All right? Perfect. Yeah. And to beat the traffic. Do you know what does that mean? Let me just give you the example. Okay. I have an interview at 9. Yeah. So I leave home at 6 because I want to beat the traffic. So you avoid a uh, traffic jam. Definitely. That's what is it. So you leave somewhere earlier than others to avoid traffic or peak time. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We yeah. do that. If, we do that. Yes. If we yeah. have a yeah. German interview, yeah. or we're going to like to take a visa or something yeah. like yeah. this. Yeah. Because yeah. the US Embassy. Yeah, yeah. the US Embassy. You have a visa appointment. Yeah. <laughs> we, you had better. You had yeah, better. you had better. Yes. And have you heard of um, Heat and One Driver? Heat and Run Driver. Okay. Heat and run driver. Mm. Do you have an yeah. idea? Like when you hit something or somebody and you just run. You run away. Yeah, run. Exactly. Okay. So if you, like, we, we do have, we have this in Haiti. And some people say this is dangerous to stop. Yeah. Yeah, because maybe people you might be hurt. Uh, they yeah. kill you, right? A lot of people, when they have an accident, they just run away. So if you do that, you are, you are a hit yeah. and run yeah. driver. driver. Yes. Hit, H-I-T, and A-N-D, run, R-U-N, hit and run. Driver. driver all right so let's go with the last one backseat driver do you know what is it <laughs> <laughs> uh, so when i say that i really think of my wife <laughs> yeah, essentially when i when i just say the, the expression i really think of do you know what is it like a backseat driver is someone who is not driving mm -hmm. but who is like who is Telling you to take precaution or to do this or do that. Yeah. Uh, don't speed. Yeah. Put your seal back. Sure. And, all the, yeah. all and they can be very annoying Is sometimes. Yeah. You know? Don't yeah. drive. Don't go yeah, that it way. Yeah. It can be stressful. Yeah. It can be stressful. Pretty stressful. Yeah. Good. Well said. All right. So, dear listeners, I hope that you have learned the words that we, we share a lot of words. You know, yeah, a lot we of do. phrasal verbs. Because we wanted to, you know, give you the most important words and phrasal verbs and idioms related to this topic. So now we are going to listen to our guest in the whole play. Adele is going to be a policeman and Wyclef is going to be a driver. It's going to be a whole play and I invite you, dear listeners, to listen to the conversation. And in this conversation, they are going to use the words that I have just shared with you. Can I see your driver's license, please? Oh, uh, yeah, I think it's in my pocket. No, maybe my wallet. Oh, yeah, here. Do you know how fast you are driving? No, sorry, it's only in a car. I'm not used to it. Have you been drinking tonight, Mr. Chen? I had one or two drinks. I'm okay to drive, though. I know my limit. How long have you been in Japan? A few weeks, why? It seems you are unaware of our zero tolerance for drinking and driving. I'm not drunk. I'll blow into a breathalyzer. In Japan, you cannot operate a vehicle after consuming any alcohol. I didn't know that. You are also going over the speed limit, Mr. Wycliffe. I'm going to ask you to step out of the vehicle and get into my car. Uh, this is crazy. What about my car? Well, we'll have to rent a car toward 
to the agency. When you're in our country, you have to respect our rules. All right. So, dear listeners, you have just listened to a ro- role play um, where Wyclef, Wyclef was driving and he was a little bit drunk. He was tipsy. <laughs> and the policeman, you know, you're zero tolerance. Yeah. And they used the word, pull, um, the phrase of a pullover, rental car, briefalizer. And again, this was just to show you how you can use the words that you have learned into your daily conversation. So, dear listeners, you are listening to Raul, the teacher's class. This is a podcast made for the EFL learners and with the EFL learners. If you are learning English and you would like to be part of the show, feel free to text us on our WhatsApp number, 4311-2830. So, just drop us a text and we will see how we can receive you in the show. So, just to finish, guys... We're going to have Wyclef sharing the good to know segment about how to avoid car accident. <laughs> how to avoid a car accident. When a world is covered with dust, sand or gravel, the tire's traction is reduced. By slowing down, you are less likely to slide when you brake. Considering investing in snow tires for winter if you drive regularly on snow covered on or AC wood. Intersection or dangerous. So when a traffic light turns green, wait before you enter in the intersection. The intersection. The basic to avoid car accident is to keep your car in good condition. To prevent mechanical problems, you can arrange a period maintenance by a competent mechanic. On the other hand, you can do maintenance yourself. Don't drink while driving. During 2008, in the United States, more than 37,000 people lost their life in automobile accident. About a third of these died in crashes involving drivers who had been drinking. Yeah. Thank you so much, Mike Love. Thank and I you. think we should mention also not texting while driving. Yeah. <laughs> yes, because, yeah. yeah, you talk about, you know, um, drinking, but also people, this is, this is something that I notice a lot. I, I recently saw a lady, she was driving and texting, but in the back seat, her baby was in the back seat. So. Oh, yeah. That's stupid. Sorry to say that, but that's stupid. And again, I, I, if I can just add a little thing is sometimes when people are driving, they also have to, you know, um, leave gap between the car that is in front of yeah, them, the car me. that they are yeah. following. Because if you are too close, this reduce, you know, your chance to react if yeah. uh, if the car, you know, stops suddenly or, or hit something. So yeah. And again adapt to road condition if you are driving fast and it start raining you definitely know that the the road the track the tire traction is not the yeah. same and the road is no longer the same it's not dry it's wet so you have to and you're gonna slide if you step on the brake so definitely the car is going to slide at you because you're driving <laughs> the car yeah. Yeah. the car is going to slide if you brake but you definitely have to you know, um, adapt to the world condition and respect the speed limit. Don't go over the speed limit. Yeah. And as you mentioned, don't drive and text. Text. Wow. Don't be DUI. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, oh. how was it for you guys? It was. It was. It was. What was it? It was a great was honor awesome. because I've been dreaming about <laughs> being in this podcast even in the episode one. Okay. And I said, yeah. And when I received the email, I was flabbergasted. You see, yeah, I did it, and I started doing all the things like. Making researches about about the the the, the, the subject that mm-hmm. we we'll we are going to discuss, mm-hmm. and that is so amazing, and this a big chance for me to be here with uh, my friend and with my mentor, with who's teacher. Wow, he's the best. Thank he's you so much. Ever. Thank you so yeah. much. And what about you, man? Oh, what was this for you? That was awesome. That was very <laughs> great. And thank you so much for inviting me. And I was like. Like a, like a dog with two tails. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. great. Dear listeners, you can also be part of the show. The first thing you have to do is um, you can just um, follow me on Instagram, Raul the Teacher, or on Twitter, Raul the Teacher. This can be a way for you to be part of the podcast. And you can also text me on the number that I have given, 4311-2830. Thank you. That was a pleasure to be with you. Catch you next time for the for another episode. Peace.